29th is simply the day that constitutionally has been set aside for the handover of power from one leader to the other, from one political party to the other, from one regime to the other, from one government to the other, peacefully. So it used to be called a democracy day until this government changed it, that it is no longer a democracy day. It is just an ordinary day for handover. When they shifted the democracy day to June 12th, so May 29th is very important in our history. But like you said, there are things that are the way they are according to the law, not the way they ought to be. The ideal thing would have been that all cases should be sorted out before swearing anybody in. Because once somebody is sworn in, the abuse of executive powers can make the person to influence mm -hmm. the process of litigation. Because you know, whoever is the president is the commander in chief of the armed forces. So it then means that unscrupulous leaders, which Nigeria cannot be exempted from, can manipulate or forcefully try to intimidate the participants in the delivery of justice. So that's the ideal thing. Unfortunately, the framers of our constitution never anticipated that we will get to this level of electoral banditry, electoral armed robbery. So, because we were governed by military rule for a long time, we are they will say, sit down, and everybody sits down. They were contemplating a disciplined society in line with that you know, unitary system of government. So when we enter democracy and this situation of election rigging and manipulation setting, we now discover that almost all the elections go to tribunal. And we now discover that the executive interference in the processes in court has always been obvious. One, the disadvantages. Once somebody is sworn in, he's going to use state resources to prosecute his own case. No doubt. While the opposition will be struggling to get resources to prosecute their own. Two, he becomes the head of, an, of a branch of government. You know, there are three arms of government. So he has the bargaining power with which he can use to mm. flog the other ones yeah. to fall in line because he's holding the pulse. So there are other reasons. You can, for instance, dangle it in front of members of the Court of Appeal. If you play ball, who will upgrade you to the Supreme Court. A lot of things. Because, you know, the president will have to appoint any justice to the Supreme Court subject to approval of the National Assembly. So he has a lot of tools in his basket with which he can bargain in a corrupt society to influence the process when it comes to power. So there is genuine agitation that cases should be completed before swearing it. In Kenya, they are doing it. Some other jurisdiction, they are doing it. But sadly, in Nigeria, the current, the, 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 the current provision 
does not stop anybody from being sworn in pending the conclusion of the case. Mm. And the time limit to conclude the case does not stop before inauguration. And then unfortunately, again, our elections go into tiers of, of tiers of and levels of power of the judiciary. So even if you finish from the court of appeal, you will still have to go to the Supreme Court. So when you finish 180 days, that is the number of days that is allowed to finish the case in the court of appeal. When you hear 180 days, it does not mean they must finish it. It means they must not exceed it. So it does not mean if they give judgment tomorrow, you say, no, they have uh, breached the law. No, it means they cannot exceed 180 days. Now, in the governorship, it is even worse. Before now, the governors stop at the court of appeal. But in Nigeria, because everybody wants to be part of the cake, they now had to amend the constitution so that the governors now will be reaching Supreme Court. So the governors are the only set of executives that their case goes to three levels of the judiciary, the election tribunal, court of appeal, and Supreme Court. So in the case of the governors now, instead of abridging time, they have enlarged time. And underneath all these things is corruption. Because people, we are beginning to scream that the court of appeal, they are more liable to be compromised than the Supreme Court. And that the governor's stopping at the court of appeal, that a lot of judgments are questionable. If you remember the Tambual case, when Tambual was the governor, mm. the case was supposed to end in court of appeal. We did not know how the Supreme Court doubled itself into it and now issued an order arresting, that was where the word, arresting the judgment of the Sokoto of the KB. That was when they started doing the, you know, gra, 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 that made the amendment of the constitution to make their case to be ending in the Supreme Court. So coming to the issue of whether swearing in is subverting the will of the people in, in accordance with the law, it is not because the law does not forbid it. But in the case of, as in on moral grounds, it ought not to be. So our constitution ought to be amended. And that is going to be the next line of advocacy. So that the Supreme Court should have original jurisdiction to entertain the matter of the presidential election. And my eyes were open. The Supreme Court said they are a policy-making court. If they can double in and say, we have jurisdiction for ordinary Naira redesign policy, which is an exclusive privilege and right of the federal government to determine. Yeah, the Supreme Court say, because it affects Nigerians, we cannot keep our eyes closed. And they assumed original jurisdiction. Original jurisdiction means that you will be the first court of trial. That's the original jurisdiction. Well, that's what it means. Okay. So the Supreme Court entered it and issued orders. Electing the president is the most important policy in Nigeria and in any country because the security and welfare of the whole citizens lie on the shoulder of whoever is the president because he is the commander-in-chief of the armed forces. And the issue of security 
till now is on the exclusive list. So if this is the most important policy, the Supreme Court should assume original jurisdiction so that it doesn't need to go to the Court of Appeal. It goes to the Supreme Court and they should be able to determine it before somebody is sworn in. So presently, the judiciary can subvert the will of the people if they don't deliver justice. But the main fact that they are not doing it before the person is sworn in, you cannot say that it is illegal. So the yeah. main swearing in of the person before the court finishes is not going to amount to subverting the will of the people. But not delivering justice whenever you now decide to give the judgment is what will amount to subverting the will of the people. In the presidential election of 2023, it is obvious that the will of the Nigerian people was subverted. Now, the will of the Nigerian people is simply the sovereignty which the constitution has said belongs to the people. Section 14.2a is very explicit. If you take it from the subsection one, mm -hmm. it says Nigeria, the Federal Republic of Nigeria shall be a state based on the principles of democracy. People always forget the end. When they read democracy, they thought it has finished. No. Principles of democracy and social justice. Anything done in Nigeria, any democracy done, which is not based on social justice, is not democracy. Now, social justice is social is the system of how a people organize themselves then justice is condition of being fair to all. So when you say social justice, you're talking about organizing your society in a manner that will be fair to all. Mm. So our democracy was meant to be a democracy that will be fair to all. And if you get to section 14 to A, it says, it is hereby accordingly declared that sovereignty belongs to the people from whom every government derives its powers and authority. You see? So any government that does not derive all its powers and authority from the people came in subversion of the will of the people. And the way people express or give power to any government in a democracy is by free, fair, and credible election. And that is why to date, the best definition of democracy is the one given by Abraham Lincoln, the former president, if not the best president of the United States of America. And he said, democracy is the government of the people, by the people, for the people of the people means that power belongs to the people. That's why one of the qualifications of anybody is that you must be a citizen of Nigeria. That is of the people. Then by the people means that it's the people that will vote the person into power. Then for the people, the government is existing mm. for the security and welfare of the people. And that is why Section 2B, I mean, subsection 2B of section 14 says the security and welfare of the people is the primary purpose of government. Now, if your government is not derived or if the power of your government is not derived from the people, the government will not owe the people security and welfare because they don't need the people to come to power. That is why most governments in the world where the democracy and the will of people 
is subverted. They are always lacking security. They always lacking welfare. They use the money to feed the Godfathers because the source of their power is not from the people, it's from the Godfathers. That is why in America, we are the vote of the mechanic is as powerful as the vote of the president. Whoever is the leader needs to just maintain the welfare of the people and will be sure to become president. But in Nigeria, the people can vote, all of them, and one godfather somewhere, you just use a phone call and say, this is the figure you will write. So they will prefer to use all the money they would have used on the people for that godfather. So the only way we can ensure that the security and welfare of the people will start mattering to the people in authority is to ensure that they come to power by the sovereign will of the people demonstrated only through fair, free, credible, and periodic election. And I give you an example of Ghana. Since Jerry Rollins introduced free, fair, and credible election in Ghana, their development has started rising. Their prestige in the Committee of Nations has started rising. Look at Kenya. Gradually, as they are getting their acts together in democracy, their development, their prestige, their institutions are getting stronger. But look at Nigeria. We are going down. By May 29, this government is going to be put to Nigeria at 7, 7 trillion in debt. It's going to be quit to Nigeria. Yeah. Insecurity of people, 518 persons being killed in six years in Zango Kataf alone. Mm. It's going to be quick to you people. Scarcity of power, scarcity of water, scarcity of fuel. The four refineries, no one is still working. Yes, the private refinery that was started about four years ago, which they are saying the largest in the world, is almost coming to. Start and even working. NNPC has a share, have bought a share in it. Good. And the four refineries, just to repay it, for eight years, they are not able. And they have paid more than 30 something trillion, maybe, or 20 something trillion to foreign countries in the name of subsidy for what you're producing, for what you have the refineries. And they have spent billions purporting to, ref to, to, to repair the refining. And nothing is working. There's no government on earth that will have that record, that will win election through free and fair election. But it happened in Nigeria. And above all, they want to bequeath a leader who himself needs to be repaired, like our refineries. He will campaign in the 36 states. 